changes. We'll start with the mirror. Harry and Meghan's defection from the royal family, uh, leading there as it does for uh, all the papers pretty much. The Sunday mirror going for the headline, Queen orders a hard exit. Harry and Meghan cast out, says the Telegraph, as the Duke and Duchess of Sussex say goodbye to their titles and royal duties. On to the Daily Star, it leads with Harry gets hair dryer off Queen. Quite clever. Uh, the mail goes for the price of Megxit, saying the Sussexes will repay the £2.4 million for Frogmore Cottage. Uh, the Sun claims taxpayers will still foot the bill for Harry and Meghan's security costs. And the Express reports the Queen has wished the couple a happy life. Well, the Observer, on the other hand, leads with the Prime Minister's warning to Cabinet, shape up or I'll sack you within weeks. That could, of course, uh, change in later editions. And I'm joined tonight by Paul Reedy and Tamandra Harkness. Great to see you both. Thanks for coming in uh, this evening. And, uh, well, things uh, certainly changed a few hours ago. <laughs> I thought we were going to be discussing. Uh, it is all about Harry and Meghan. And, uh, Tamandra, what an incredible statement from the Queen. Well, is it, though? I mean, they, they basically said, we don't want to be part of this anymore, and we don't want to do the jobs that come with being part of the royal family, so... But there's breaks and there's clean breaks. Well, I, I don't know quite what they expected to happen, that they might, you know, dip in and do the bits they felt like and then, and then swan off when they didn't feel like it. Uh, so, I mean, it seems fair enough to me, although... You know, I'm basically a Republican, so I don't really think we should have a royal family, so, so I may be biased. But I do think it's interesting because it reveals... I think that what the royal family is and what it's for is in flux. That I think maybe Meghan came in thinking of it as a celebrity role, thinking that, you know, you kind of sign a contract to be a princess like you might sign a contract to be a Disney princess, only instead of a three-film contract, it's a, I don't know, a three-baby contract. <laughs> uh, and then you can renegotiate the terms if you don't like it. And obviously that's not really how the royal family has worked because it's an institution that's political as well as ceremonial. But on the other hand, the very fact, I think, that everybody went, oh, how wonderful, she's a breath of fresh air, she's going to change things and maybe give the royal family a new lease of life, suggests that actually the old role wasn't working and they were hoping that she would come in and say it. turns it. out we didn't want that at all, did we? <laughs> <laughs> we wanted things to say exactly the same. Well, I, I, think... I, mean, I, think, I think the public actually I did warm to her and go, great, we really like her, well, her mum's really cool, what a, what a cool wedding yes. service. So and the public have always liked Harry as well. Yes. Uh, yeah, so I don't, I don't think it's, it's, I don't think it was a push, I, but I, I do think it, it's revealed, I think, that what the royal family is and how it works is no longer to be taken for granted, but I'm not sure what the answer is. It's so interesting that, that yes, I mean, people, there was an expectation that the royal family would change, and there's still expectation that the royal family would change, and there's been talk for a long time about Prince Charles seeing his mission as mm. to, to, to narrow it down, to slim, to slim the royal family. Um, and this is, you know, his job's been done for him somewhere. You know, Harry essentially, you know, is now, you know, Harry and his children are never going to be monarchs. Yeah, barring, you know, barring a horrendous disaster, that's not going to happen. So, so why should they perhaps you know, have to carry out these additional, have all these additional roles, all this additional money, all this additional security, so on? In some way, this is hastening the process. But, but Tamandra makes a good point, I think, also that outside of the UK, this is a celebrity story. This is entirely a celebrity story. I was, I was, I was at home before coming in this evening listening to, um, to Five Live uh, on BBC, and they... The person that they called to get America was TMZ, the celebrity website. This, this, is, this is not a, a, a constitute. This isn't a constitutional crisis here, really, either. Because again, this is not an heir to the throne. This is fundamentally very little has well, really it's changed apart line. from. Yes, but he's a long way. He's, he's still a long way off, you know, and getting further away. You know, the the, the, the in line things are insane, and I think we will see a more fracture, not fracture, but but a more streamlined role with with people such as Harry, such as, you know, the, the other, you know, the cousins, from being more and more kind of marginalised, and, you know, we We'll see them very rarely at weddings and funerals, essentially. But we're in a situation where Harry's yeah. lost his title, but and and Andrew still has his. Andrew has his, and Andrew's children still have yeah. theirs. Um, fascinating, which, which were hard fought for, and we don't really know what they do. They, they have, you know, I think Beatrice does have an actual real job in the real world, um, but, but carries on as a HRH. Um, in practical terms, I mean, very little. I think that, that what it also, it's what Andrew's hinted at, is that, you know, 
the, the, the entire, you know, we're all little girls are brought up to think, you know, you can be a princess, you, you will marry the handsome prince. And she's actually done that, and now she's you know, seemingly punished for it. Um, you know, she, she told me as soon as, as soon as she got the prize, the, the narrative switched massively. It was this incredible romance, and then it became she's upsetting things, she's dividing the, the dividing the court, dividing the palace. There were you know stories about how they had taken on the press team, the recent legal battles they have taken on their own legal team rather than using the palace legal team. They're probably quite ill advised in, in those battles, and. The narrative switched, and I wonder will it switch back again to this, impos- to this being an impossible romantic sacrifice. Yeah. Well, it's an interesting point you make. Let's have a look at the front of the mail, because they've gone on with the headline, The Price of Mexit. Uh, mm-hmm. And this phrase uh, sort of started appearing on Twitter, didn't it, um, not so long ago. Um, and I wonder if it's a bit unfair to Mandra, because it's putting very much the onus on, on Meghan wanting to, to quit and wanting to leave. Whereas Harry, Harry hasn't been happy for, for a very long time, has he, with, with the treatment uh, that he's received or perceived to have received? I, I can't say I followed it that closely. But no, you're right. I mean, it, 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 there is a little bit of a subtext of kind of Yoko Ono breaking up the Beatles, isn't there? It's like yeah. everything was fine and then you had to come along and ruin everything. And, there uh, was a good which, Facebook meme going around last week with, with Megan, you know, photoshopped as Yoko Ono. Well, yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Which, you know, it is unfair because they have, they've made a decision as a couple to get out. Uh, yeah, so maybe... Maybe she is being singled out to, to be blamed for this. But I, I say, I think, I think the, really the problem is that the royal family was trying to reinvent itself and maybe saw that it could do this by, you know, we get this injection of glamour and celebrity and she's American and she's very fresh and very, very woke, you know, very, very right on uh, and bring her in. And, and maybe that in itself was putting a lot of pressure on the couple to say, the whole royal family is looking at you to help us reinvent ourselves for the modern era. And maybe well, they've gone, also maintaining all we, the yeah, tradition, we, all we the don't actually ceremony. want to have to sort all of you out. We, we're just going to go on ourselves. But haven't ourselves William and Kate do done this? that quite successfully? You know, they're, they're, they've sort of gone with the mantra of um, uh, uh, never complain, never explain, in a yes. way that Meghan and Harry clearly have. But, and, but they, and that could be part of the rift between the brothers. Certainly, William and Kate, uh, William and Kate uh, I think, you know, we. We, all, we like uh, they've drifted into much more traditional roles now. I think you know earlier you know, when when they were the the young you know, ancient couple, you know, we we were all very excited about them just because it was again a new fresh face, so we could see you know a developing romance in the family. But but Kate, the, the story of Kate, the, the narrative about Kate is very different, of course. That she was, you know, her parents, you know. Spon- you know, decided early on apparently that they were going to send her to university and she was you know, raised raised with the hope of marrying royal and and, and she did megan sorry yeah, different of course that she was successful she raised with, with her, that, 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 her parents that, hoping that she'd marry a royal she, she certainly uh, that that was the, <laughs> well, the story at the time was that she went to saint andrews with the express purpose of meeting of meeting uh, oh. prince william and, <laughs> and then marrying him and she did and, and fair play yeah. and this megan's story is obviously very different she was you know she she was a reasonably successful actress. She had her own career, her own profile. She was a UNICEF ambassador. She had all these things that she was doing already with her life. And marrying a prince was and they, they met more as an additional thing yeah. rather, than, rather than her sole name. So it became... So I think that, yes, you're right, there was pressure to be both this modernising person and, this, and, this inc- and still uphold this incredible tradition. I think, yes, and a lot of it is put on her where we know, as you say, Harry was unhappy in his role. I think you know, we all know the idea that Harry is you know, always happiest... You know, in the army, essentially, where he got to be fairly normal, uh, as normally could, as he possibly could be. He got to have a job, he got to have colleagues and comrades, and he didn't have to spend every day being the prince. He had it, he had, you know, fulfilling a role other than that. Uh, one of the sad things Camilla Tomley points out in the Telegraph now is that he, he has lost all his, all his military positions, some of which were honorary, but still clearly meant a lot to him. He's done a lot with the Invictus Games and so on. And that's, you know, I feel, I feel personally sad for him. No matter what your views on the monarchy, that must be, it must be very, you know, crushing to have be raised in this role and have this, all these things that you're expected to do and not be able to reconcile that, really, with your romantic life and the person you love. Yeah, and while we're talking, it might be nice to be in the front of the Observer, uh, of the observer as well as we can, uh, just before the break. Um, uh, which brings us back quite neatly to what we were talking about at the start, really. Uh, do you think Harry and Meghan wanted to have their cake and eat it, and the Queen now has come down with an iron fist and said, look, forget it, you know, we're going to cut the royal, the, 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 the military associations, we're going to make you pay back the Frogmore Cottage money. Do you think that has, uh, has happened? Do you think the Queen here has really ruled 
uh, uh, <laughs> against her family's wishes. Well, we'll, we'll never know, will we? I mean, it, it, but it, I think it's clear that from them initially saying, look, we want to step back and we don't want to do it all, uh, and then it's been like, OK, well, if you don't want to do it all, then you're not doing any of it, and you're either in or you're out. You can't be a part-time royal. Uh, it, it has been really laid down pretty clearly. But again, I mean, I think that's kind of fair enough. And, and also the financial aspect has been laid down very clearly. By, you know, you can't keep drawing taxpayers' money, which goes to supporting a royal being a royal, if you're not going to walk, walk and shake the hands and talk the talk. And that perhaps comes a bit from the sense that there is already some feeling amongst the population that, well, you know, we give quite a lot of money for the royals. And although I think they're generally still very popular, and if, if there was a referendum, I, I have no doubt that people would say, yeah, we, we love the royals, we want to keep them there, and, and you know, they represent something. Maybe we're no longer sure what. I think, I think the one, the one, thing, we, the one but, thing we know the about... Thing, maybe the one thing we know about, about the Queen and, and Prince Philip is that... You know, the, the business comes first, yeah. and it is their job to protect it. For to use a term in one phrase, it's, it's their job to protect the brand. Mm. And Tom's right. You know, if, this, if this became an unsustainable conflict, then yeah, it's their right yeah. to, to probably to nip it in the bud. Interesting to talk about the money, because the Canadians are now scratching their heads, wondering how much it's going to cost them. <laughs> 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 well, well, yeah. so, yeah. How many mountains? Um, thank you both for the moment very much indeed. Uh, coming up, time for lift off with Rocket Man. So David Jason as he prepares for a new TV series. We'll tell you about that in a moment. <laughs>